What's up guys, we're back with another educational video and this week we're talking about plant-based versus carnivore. But before we get into that, why don't you hit that like button and if you aren't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. I know many of you watch the channel but aren't subscribed. It really helps us out if you do. I was doing an Instagram Q&A the other day and typically I get the same questions over and 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 over again. But somebody asked me if I had to choose, which would I choose? A carnivore diet or a plant-based diet? Now, when I say plant-based, let's just assume we're not talking any animal products. I know it can mean different things to be different people, but let's go for the extremes. Now, normally I hate false dichotomies because why would I choose if I don't have to? But in this case, I think it's worth talking about why I would choose what I would choose because I think it might surprise some of you guys. Just full transparency, my PhD research was funded in part by, I think it was called the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, but mostly by the Egg Nutrition Center and the National Dairy Council. I was funded by basically animal farmers. Uh, my research was funded by animal farmers, which previously crazy vegans have used to say, well, that's why you can't trust what he says. But uh, I think I've shown a history of repeatedly calling out BS regardless of which side it's on. So in this case, I think a lot of people because of my background would say, well, they would definitely pick the carnivore diet. Actually, I would pick the plant-based diet and here's why. You can still get decent sources of protein on a plant-based diet, especially if you're willing to supplement. So if you're willing to supplement with like isolated protein powders that are plant-based, you could still do okay. Like they're probably not quite as good as animal protein powders, because even something like corn, which is 12% leucine, corn isolates, 12% leucine, it's also like really, really low in other amino acids. But you can always combine different protein powders. You can do a corn and a soy. And if you blend those, you're gonna have everything covered in terms of your essential amino acid. I know people are like, oh, soy decreases testosterone, it feminizes men. There's now quite a few randomized control trials out there examining this and a meta-analysis and they show that it doesn't decrease testosterone, it doesn't feminize you. So especially if we're talking about just using it a few times a day, you don't need to worry. And if you can find potato protein isolate, that's actually a really great source of basically all your essential amino acids. So you can do really well from a protein perspective on a plant-based diet. It's just gonna require a little bit more effort in terms of making sure that you're not limiting in any particular amino acids. The other thing to keep in mind is if you're eating high protein, like above two grams per kilogram of lean body mass, as you get up that high in protein, the quality of the protein becomes less important. Protein quality is most important at low protein levels. So if you're a plant-based person who's not eating very much protein, then you're gonna have to do a lot more work in terms of combining different sources to make it actually cover your needs. You could just eat beef, people say. You know, beef's a great source of protein, and it is. Very bioavailable, very high quality proteins, about 8% leucine. But if you're only eating meat, you are missing out on so many things. And most importantly, you're missing out on fiber. And fiber is so important for a myriad of different reasons. But let's just look at all-cause mortality. So there was a recent meta-analysis looking at all-cause mortality and fiber intake. And they found that your risk of mortality was inversely proportional to your fiber intake. And for every 10 gram increase in fiber, there was a 10% decrease in the risk of mortality. That is crazy. Like that's actually really impressive when it comes to nutritional research and like how much things have an effect. I would never expect fiber to have that much of an effect. And then if you go through and look at the individual diseases, you look at cancer, fiber decreases your risk of cancer. Cardiovascular disease, fiber decreases your risk of cardiovascular disease. And it's again, linear effects. And especially if we're talking about colorectal cancer, fiber decreases your risk of colorectal cancer. So if I have to pick between those two, I'm gonna pick the one where I can still do okay protein wise, I can still build muscle, but I can also be healthy and reduce my risk of these various diseases. And part of this is probably because of some of the food synergies of where fiber is found. I mean, you find it in vegetables, you find it in fruits, 
you find it in whole grains. Those things also have other nutrients in them that are probably positively contributing to this effect. But that being said, you're still getting those sources if you're eating a plant-based diet, whereas if you're eating only meat, you're not gonna get that. Now, I know there are some people who will hear what I say and they go, well, I had all these uh, digestive problems and I tried an all meat diet and I felt better. Listen, I am talking about making recommendations on a population level. I am not saying that there aren't individuals who subjectively feel better on very strange diets. Some people go on a carnivore diet and say they feel better. What I would say is most likely is what they've just done is basically an elimination diet. So a carnivore diet is kind of an elimination diet. And for people with a lot of gastrointestinal disorders, elimination diets can subjectively make them feel better. What I would say is you can probably do an elimination diet and still add back in specific fiber types and probably still feel just fine. A lot of it is about doing your due diligence and as you add them back, just adding one thing at a time so you can see what negatively affects you versus what doesn't. Now, that being said, we don't have to choose. So what do I typically recommend? I think why not get the best of both worlds? So if you're eating plant material, high in fiber, and also getting protein from some lean protein sources like fish, like lean beef, like chicken, etc., those are great options and you're literally getting the best of both worlds. So why choose? Unless of course you're doing it for ethical reasons with regards to animals, which I'm not here to talk about that, but if that's important to you, then of course, you know, going more plant-based is usually what people decide to do in that aspect. Guys, hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next week.